Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Captain's Draft 3.0. We've got Tornado Rocks versus Stark GG Game 2 Lower Bracket. This is Elimination. Tornado Rocks looking strong in Game 1. The BZZ Alchemist breaking 1,000 GPM carried them to victory. I'm sorry, we joined by Draftsco. We've got Sir Action Stats at the helm. And, of course, Pimp Muckle doing all the production and OBS. Andy, coming into Game 2, what's the good word, my man? The good word is don't lose all three of your lanes and maybe you can win a, win a Dota game. That's the word. I um, like it. The bird's the I, word. I don't think that's going to happen again. Like, it's very rare that you see a game where a team loses all three lanes without, like, some kind of intervention with, like, a roamer hero or something like that. Mm -hmm. But when it's, the lanes are static, it's super uncommon to ha to see that kind of thing. So I'm yeah. hoping that Stark will be able to bounce back in game two. Uh, this hero pool is slightly more disgusting than the last one. Yeah. And by disgusting, I mean there's a lot more high-tier heroes in it that you have to worry about, so... The DP's banned out. Uh, let's it's see. An, Profit. It's kind Lone of an Druid. odd support setup. There's the Triant Protector and Earthshaker again, so that helps break it up. The Triant will get banned out. Die if you look at the intelligence supports, you've got Skywrath, Coddle, Shadow Demon, and Visage. All four of them have their niches, but not the most popular of picks. So that may kind of influence the way these drafts go. We saw last game, both teams prioritized supports heavily. But the first four picks Radiant were actually all supports. Back. So... Yeah, could see some more of that. You talked about it a lot in the last game about why that is to establish some lane control early on. Yeah, but this pool is uh, much different in that regard. Like if you look at the the cores that are there, there's only actually like a handful that aren't good in lane. The reason why the supports were so heavily prioritized in game mm. one is because the supports were the controlling force of the laning phase, not the carries. I this see. game, it's it's pretty much the opposite. Because right, you've like got Shadow LD, Demon. you've got Slark, you've got all these kind of mobile carries that can actually have a laning presence. Well, it's it's more like Queen, Lesh, Gyro, Lone Druid, oh. uh, to a certain degree, LC, Wraith King. Like, these types of heroes are actually good in lane. Slark is awful in lane, like, super bad. But, um, yeah, it, it's just dynamic that changes from hero pool to hero pool. It's right. one thing that if you're a really experienced captain, you'll be able to realize right away, which is why both teams just understood. It's like, oh, these are going to be the contested heroes. We should probably get on this. So uh, opening. Wait, why is Slark so bad in lane? I mean, I, I'm picturing him with like a, a D, if he's like in lane with Avenger or something. There's some some kill power there. He's got dark pack to Radiant get rid of stuff. Yeah, he's got but a the problem, getaway. The problem that he has is normally he wants to trade with melee heroes, and when he deals damage via dark pack, he's also dealing damage to himself. Most Slark mm -hmm. players nowadays opt to max dark pack just for the sole reason that you want to farm. You don't actually want to fight super early on Slark. He's very fragile. His strength gain is isn't very good. He mm -hmm. has no sustainability in lane until he gets six. So for the first like you know eight ten minutes of the game, he all he can do is auto attack, throw out a pounce, and run away. Okay, I yeah, see. Yeah, if you're outnumbering, then yeah, okay, it can be good. It can be a way to jump in, kill an off laner. In that regard, I agree. If your lane is going to be contested, Slark is poop. Just okay, and you know the poop. way that you explain it that way, I feel like. I when I said that I was picturing a lot of games where I've seen Slark really shine in the laning stage, but almost every single time it's built around a tri lane with two stuns or some kind of setup with a lot of kill power yeah. where he's only picked that way when he's basically set up to succeed. So that's a really good point. Yeah, it's one of those heroes that needs a lot, a lot of protection if you want to have him get a good start. Yeah, Tornado like Rocks that. actually pulling out the Legion. I personally love this hero. It's one of my favorites, so I'm I'm okay. getting a fan fanboy over it a little bit. Right. Uh, I think she's pretty underused, but I think a lot of teams have a really hard time experimenting in phases where there's just so many tournaments that you don't have yeah. time to try any stuff. And she she's a cool hero. A... The nature of her having that press the attack way of debu or like purging people and cleansing them is is pretty unique. There aren't a lot of abilities that can do that, and it's a cool dynamic for a hero that also does a lot of damage and has so much initiation there capability. Is, there's actually only three, or I don't. I think they changed Oracle ulti. So yeah. they had that, and they had Ab uh, Shield, which were right, the aquatic, only yeah. strong dispels. But I don't think Oracle ulti works the same way anymore, so it might only be two. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't play Oracle that much. So maybe yeah, it I'm moves at the beginning Oracle of player. the cast now, and not continuously. But okay. either way... Yeah, so the Timber Saw comes out. Very good against Lone Druid and Legion Commander. It's mm -hmm. really good against Duel, because you can always get like the full duration chakra room. It's very easy to line up Timber Chain and whatnot against a hero who can't move, so... Yeah. Solid counter pick here. Also not bad against Skywrath Mage. Timber Chain uh, can be a way to get out. Well, it, it's back and forth. If Skywrath drops the full rotation, the silence is good against Timber Saw, but he's very mobile and can kind of jump on the Skywrath in a team fight and blow him up if he's not the one being focused. So it kind of goes back and forth. But 
I like the Coddle Shadow, De Shadow Demon, an interesting support duo here. It's another counter pick to the, the Legion to a certain degree. Like, you can just disrupt the hero, you can disrupt the Legion. It's a nice save. And I also think that with the new disruption, like, because of how long it lasts in the late game, a lot of people underestimate how much damage, like, 12 seconds of those illusions do, because it's 60%, right? Mm -hmm. So if they last the full 12 second duration and they're hitting on somebody, you try to ignore them like you used to, it can uh, be very, very painful for you. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, the Skywrath Legion combo is super dangerous. So not having a counterplay to that, I think, would have been some kind of a mistake. So just seeing the Legion Commander, they take the Shadow Demon. I think it's a, a good step in the right direction. Oh, no, wait, they pick Legion after the Shadow Demon, right? Uh, yes. Okay, so they just YOLO picked it. Hmm. <laughs> kind That's of. a little bit more interesting, but I suppose Soul Catcher and Demonic Purge are both very good against Lone Druid. Like, that's mm -hmm. definitely a thing. You can use it defensively against Entangle. You can open on him. It's pretty strong. I see. The Earthshaker Lesh, the final two picks for Tornado Rocks. A lot of magic damage there to round out their roster. BZZ Lesh, so we'll see him in the driver's seat in the mid lane, not support as we did in game one. And for Stark, they grabbed the Wraith King. So they tried it last game, did not work out so well. They're going to try it again, but this go-round, it's going to be Nemphy that picks up the Wraith King. Uh, he was on the Lena uh, in the last matchup. So they are going to pull a switch. This time, Boogie will get to go with the Queen of Pain. So I wonder if they're... Gonna do a funky lane setup, or if they're just swapping the roles and it'll be Boogie that plays mid and Nemphy that heads to the safe lane. Or aggro try if that's what they go for, though. I highly doubt it. Yeah, I think they... Uh, I, don't, I don't think they'll go for the aggro try. Uh, I'm gonna rejoin the game really quick. Apparently my okay. mic is ripperinoed. So, uh... Overall, though, I do think that the, the lineup of Tornado Rocks is fairly strong. I can see the kill potential coming in, though, between the Keeper of the Light, the Wraith King Blast, and then you have the uh, Shadow Demon opener with the disruption on top of that can be incredibly strong to deal with. You get caught by a disruption, you're dead. Like th There's nothing you can do. And the nice thing about the new Keeper of the Light is because the way that they buff Chakra Magic again to where it's 6 seconds off your cooldown, it means you can stun every 2 seconds on Wraith King, pretty much. Like you stun, 2 seconds later you have another stun, you can use disruption to like eat that time up basically, or you can just like body block a tiny bit and you should be able to kill any yeah. hero. Yeah. All right, we're back in, resumed and ready to rock and roll. I really hope Volix puts some early love into Mana Leak. I swear to God, if I see another Max Illuminate, Max Chakram Keeper, I'm going to lose it. Are you aboard the bandwagon here, Drasko? Are, are, are you on the Mana Leak hype train? I feel like this ability is just, it's absolutely worth one point, if not I, more. I usually go, uh, when I play Coddle, I go 1-2-2, two, two, like every okay. game. Okay, I like that. I like that. So I, what I do typically, if... I think I can zone the offlaner, I skill Mana Leak when I see him, like if I think that I can do a lot with it. If I don't, I get Illuminate, and then I get Chakra, and then I get Mana Leak, and then I get Chakra again at 4. So okay. the skill build kind of varies. Excellent stats, Slacks, thank you. Appreciate that very much. And <laughs> yeah, make sure you tweet at Moonduck with all of your problems, that's good. <laughs> I like how my problem escalated a... when he got here from not just, seconds. I have to unmute it and remute or whatever, but it actually just doesn't work until I rejoin now. Like that's his great... Awesome. It's it's devolved. It's yeah. <laughs> it's getting worse somehow, some way. So looking at the lane setup, the Legion Commander headed to the off lane. The bear and oh, the bear. the bear is the bear going down? Bear is dead. Oh, nice fissure, but it's not enough. I think Coddle got that bonus gold. He did. Yeah, That's three hundred gold going to Volux to start this game. That's pretty nice. Three hundred wing wings, man. It's a lot of money. I mean, that's 400 gold difference at the 0, zero mark with the bounty rune. Or actually, I guess it's still 300 because both teams got one. But we'll see how the lanes shape up here. It seems like Stark are going to go aggressive for the second time in a row. Or they're just going to do a 2-1-2. Two, two. Haven't actually... No, I think they have to put the Coddle with the Wraith King. If they don't put him up here, it makes no sense. Yeah, he's going to walk there. He just bought sentries because he got all that money. All right, so they're actually going to aggro try again. Interesting. This is a very similar setup to what Slark, or Stark, I keep wanting to say Slark, what Stark did in the last game. Um, though, of course, with different heroes. Timbersaw should be able to match up pretty well against the LC. I don't think Trixie should die solo this go around as he did last time against the Lich. Thoughts about this aggro try, Draskal? Is this one a little better than what we saw last game? They had Lesh AA with the Wraith King before. We'll see the setup here, but Fissure breaks it up and Illuminate won't even connect. Uh, I think. It's a lot less likely that kills will be exchanged in this lane for the reasons that we just saw. Like, Yul came to lane with four clarities. He is more than prepared to stop the follow-up after the disruption goes off. All he has to do is stun Nemphy, 
as the disruption is ending and there's no follow-up. So I, I think it should be pretty easy for Sedoi to farm in the situation. I don't know if it's worth going aggro. They can go for like the lane pulling, which I'm sure they will. Uh, OKC mm -hmm. is already in position to do that. Yeah, I don't think it will be as bad as last games, for sure, because yeah, I don't think it gets true. any worse than how that laning phase went. Yeah, their other lanes should definitely go a lot better. It's interesting to see Lesh Queen of Pain mid. You don't really see that solo mid Lesh so much anymore. And looking at the matchup, it seems Lesh is actually bringing it to Boogie. BZZ 9-2 and two to the 4-0 and zero Queen of Pain out of the gate. Yeah, it's a bit surprising, actually. Queen of Pain has a fairly substantial base damage lead in this matchup. It's probably just a player skill difference right now that's allowing BZZ to dominate the lane as he yeah. is. Because they started with more or less the same exact items, like... Fairy Fire, Iron Branch, No Talisman, Pool Tango, so then oh. you do buy self. Nice block from Yol. Doing a lot of damage to OKC. Arcane Bolt actually flies through also, but not going to be able to find a kill. Meanwhile, in the mid, Boogie taking a lot of damage from BZZ. Curious what build he's going to move into here if he actually, like when he gets the Edict. He's going for the 202, a much more standard solo Lesh that we've, uh, that I'm used nice. to seeing, though recently we've been seeing that Edict like all day. Yeah, he won't get Edict, though, because it's it's not a lineup where he needs to contribute to the push. Like, Legion right, Commander and Lone Druid are the, the tower killers in this lineup. He doesn't need to be that guy who eats through Treant armor and gets chip damage in, you know, so he can actually kill buildings. There's no need for that this game. He just needs mm -hmm. to win his lane, which he's doing quite handedly right now. All right. How's Timbersaw doing? Seems to be... Eh, seems like a kind of a wash down in the bottom lane. Talked about mid already. Top is definitely going better for the Wraith King. He's at least getting some farm this time. He's level 3. 9 last hits. Could be worse. Yeah, it's kind of even. Like, the, the way the lanes are trading off right now. I think to some degree, it probably still favors uh, Stark, just because their, their mid-game burst damage and their fighting potential is still quite strong. Where Lone Druid needs at least one core item, so delaying him from that Radiance timing is going to be nice for them. Spooky almost freaking dies middle lane again. Yeah, this is really tough. Lesh had the bottle earlier, so he's just been able to put out so much more damage and harassment in general. Boogie gets his bottle. Not to crow for now. He's slowly coming back in this lane. It's, of course, Lesh favored, but still recoverable. Yeah, it's favored, but it's not like super lopsided either way. You just have to be very mindful of not eating too many lightning storms. I think what happened was he was trying to play aggressive in the first couple waves, so he kept eating stuns. That's the way that you lose in this matchup. You try to go in for daggers instead of actually, you know, just going for the CS and outlast hitting because you have better base damage. All right, a two-minute break here. Okay. All right, Dresk, I got a good Twitch, ca uh, Twitch chat question for you. Why okay. is Troll Warlord never picked? Because he's ass. <laughs> Okay. I yeah. mean, okay, so the old Troll Warlord, he had uh, a bigger base damage because when you switch into melee form, I think it was like 10 or 15 damage that you got when you swapped. Mm -hmm. They took that away, which makes his landing phase worse. They nerfed Whirling Axes. They nerfed uh, the vision from it. They nerfed his... I don't even know what the range form axes are called, honestly, because I, I like, um, never play that hero. But It's Whirling Axes, I think, isn't it? Is it Whirling Axes for both forms? I thought one was Whirling Axes mm -hmm. and one was called something else. Uh, maybe I don't they even have different know. names. I, I just always call it Whirling Axes. The hero just got, like, super nerfed. Yeah. Multiple times. He just doesn't do enough. I saw him picked in Canada Cup, I think, maybe two weeks ago. I was casting the game, and it was, it was really not good. It just didn't do anything. <laughs> I mean, he, he farmed a BKB and then popped his ult and just didn't have the damage. Speaking of not doing much, Boogie in the mid lane. Solo killed by the Lesh. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, see ya. Being tracked down by RZ. Here, he'll bump right into the bear. Oh, God. All of a sudden, the damage erupts. The Seder even helping him out. Hits him with the shockwave, and that's an easy kill here. RZ will get credit for that one. 2 to nil. Rocks Kiss getting on the score, or pardon me, Tornado Rocks getting on the scoreboard. Yeah. Uh, just to answer one more thing about the Troll Warlord thing, it, it's uh, one of those heroes that actually needs quite a bit of space nowadays. And back when he was picked a lot, as Yul's probably going to be dying here. Uh oh. Yeah, he did. Oh, Fissure? God, that was no not a Fissure. And yep, I think that's going to be the end of the Earth Shaker. Yeah. The game is much more fast paced nowadays, basically, is why Troll can't be played. Hmm. Yeah, the carries that can put pressure on and get involved. I mean, even Lone Druid, right? He's got an extra bear. You can do stuff in the laning stage. Troll, really, you close your eyes, pray for a 10% bash, and try to last hit as many creeps as you can. It's it's a tough life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
I mean, this is still looking pretty good for Tornado Rocks, though. They get the first blood. They did lose their Earthshaker, but they're one kill up right now. Their offlane is farming a lot. Like, granted, this is a 1v1, but Gothic cool. is doing insanely well in this matchup. Yeah, he's level 6 already, leading the last hit chart. Yeah, I yeah. think the bottle purchase actually, like, totally won him this lane. He knows that there's pretty low probability that there's going to be much rotation since BZZ is winning middle so hard. And the Queen is going to feel like she can't really go to either rune because the supports are actually moving around the map from Tornado Rocks. That means he can get almost every single bottom rune that spawns. And mm. when you have that kind of luxury as a Legion 1v1, you pretty much never have to back. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I mean, mana becomes your, your only real bottleneck at some point because you can just keep regenerating with press the attack. So, six minute rune, he'll rotate over. And there we go. Haste rune picked up there. Up top, Lesh will grab the bounty rune. Yeah, this is just all Tornado Rocks with this rune control. Up top, we're going to see a setup here on the Nemphi. Oh, the Fissure just clips him, Where's but he ends up on the other side of it. Do they have the damage? Bear going through. Still no Entangling Claws. They turn on to the Bear. Wraithfire Blast. This should be a 300 gold bounty, and it is going the way of the Radiant. That was uh, pretty unfortunate. They didn't get a root. I, that was like, what, five or six hits, I think? And he didn't get a single Entangle? Yeah, that was That's fairly really unlucky. unlucky. Uh oh, Haste Rune down bottom, used by Ghostic, goes in onto Trixie, looking for a duel. Doesn't grab it. Timber chain away. He'll be safe. Uh, I don't think he wins that duel with that amount of HP. Like, he needs another hero to be down here if he wants to get it. I thought what they would do is just use it to rotate on mid, because if the Lesh lands one stun into a duel on Queen, that would be a kill. Yeah, definitely, with all that Lesh follow up damage. Now we'll have a rotation the other way. It's Wraith King headed down to the bottom lane. Nemphi, level four, does have two points in the Wraith Fire Blast. Also a rotation from Tornado Rocks. It's the Earthshaker. Radiant have seen it though. They've got that lane ward down, so they know he's hiding in the trees. And they will be wary of his positioning here. I don't think they can kill Gossic, like. This is odd from Nemphi, because he was farming. He's got 19 last hits, one kill, and now he's sort of just rotating, hiding in the trees. This is a very costly rotation for what I presume is still a core Wraith King. Yeah, it's trying to be. Here we go, stun onto Yol. Fissure gets it started. Now Yol's on the back foot. He'll just run away. He gets to press the attack. Boogie comes in though, hits him with the scream. They've got the damage, you get the kill there. It's a one for nil the other way, but again, it's very costly. Four heroes just for an Earthshaker. And if you factor in all the time the Wraith King spent standing there, I think Tornado Rocks are kind of okay with that. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. I think the main reason that he's starting to rotate so much is because he sees the fact that the top lane is not really winnable anymore. The Lone Druid has too many levels, he's 7, it's very hard to focus him down, he has Entangling Claws on the bear, one root pretty much means that you could die, even as like the Wraith King, and he's, he wasn't even 6 when he was up there previously, so mm -hmm. I kind of get why he decided to lead the lane, but again, it's another one of those situations where they're not prioritizing a hero who should have farm priority. Yeah. It just seems a little bit weird. Definitely. Tornado Rock's going on to a decent lead here. About 1,500 net worth and XP. Boogie still trying to recover in this mid lane. 33 last hits compared to the 47 of the Lesh, who is number one on net worth by a pretty big margin now, sitting at 4K, feeling uh, feeling pretty good. Arcane Boots already up, another 1,000 gold. What's the build on Lesh when you're in this kind of a situation? Do you still look for an early Bloodstone? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Bloodstone is the best snowball item. I don't think Tornado Rocks have any fear of going late against Stark's lineup. It's not really... Too scary. BKBs are amazing against their team as well. Uh, BCZ just whipped the stun super hard. <laughs> he gonna die for that? Oh, he, he had enough mana actually for everything if he sticked. I think he could have killed him. Down bottom, Tornado Rocks eat a smoke and go for a rotation here. They might bump into Valix who's just stacking and farming in the jungle. Go stick on the front lines here with a couple supports behind. They might find Boogie. If he gets the duel, they should have the follow up damage. Silence onto Valix. Beautiful Fissure connects on both. The duel will not find the kill. Okay, see it with a defensive disruption, but they get the kill on the Keeper of the Light. It'll cost them their Sky Wrath on the high ground. Support for support. Fairly even trade, I think. Uh, it would have been a lot nicer if they were able to get that kill on the Queen. I don't even think the disruption was necessary, though, because they yeah. used the stun during the duration of the duel to try to kill just by dealing more damage, so they didn't have another way of stopping her from blinking out anyway. I suppose at the end of the day, it still ends up being fairly even. Mm-hmm. I I don't know, I, I think Stark, they're just scrambling around, like trying to find any semblance of a kill while this whole time Sedoi is just farming away. Yeah. I mean, this this bear, I mean, he's been fairly quiet. He's got phase boots up on the bear. 
No Midas or anything yet, but behind the tower, Trixie getting dove here. Yol hits him with a stun. Can BZZ get there in time? The lightning is not enough damage. Now Boogie rotates over, but gets caught by a split earth, taking so much damage from the Pulse Nova. No kill, but both heroes on the side of start completely crippled, and they are forced into a defensive posture. Now BZZ stunned under the tower. Sonic Wave finds the kill there. Much needed as Yol drops a stun, runs, sidesteps the Illuminate. He'll be okay for now, but they're still in hot pursuit. Nemphi only power treads, not so fast. Does have a stun, throws it onto the bear. Is the follow-up going to be there to actually get the kill here? Illuminate, oh, just falls short. And the spirit bear will live. So just the Lesh that falls, not bad for Stark. One for nil. Yeah, I think they were just going a little bit too ham. I think that Stark has already shown that they have no issue like roaming around trying to look for the fights. So it's interesting that they decide to try to take the fight to Stark, who seemingly want to be doing that. Whereas, again, like waiting for Sadoi's Radiance, there's nothing wrong with playing a little bit passive right now. I mean, Gossick still is making his way towards either Blade Mail or Blink, whatever he opts to go for. These core items Radiance just make Tornado Rocks so, so much stronger than they are right now. And trying to force engagements when you're not quite up to that point, I'm not sure if they want to keep doing that. Yeah. Nice setup from the Quap there. Or, well, nice stun to set up for the Quap ult. Wraith King now moves into Hand of Midas. All right, Nymphy. We're going to power farm a little bit. I, I feel that this is risky here, Draskal. I think this makes him pretty vulnerable to Tornado Rocks just putting pressure on. I mean, maybe he's thinking, well, this Lone Druid's been fairly passive just farming the lane so far, but they can 4 plus 1 pretty easily and still really pressure this Hand of Midas pickup. Yeah, they could, but they could also just sit back and farm their Radiance and farm their Blink Dagger. I, I don't think they're going to see that and feel that they need to go try to do something right this second. I think okay. that's why the Midas is actually good in this situation. Because even if you put the Lone Druid Bear on the tower, you have deep push with the Keeper of the Light. There's a you know good spam from Stark that can keep their towers alive for quite a long time. So unless they get like multiple pickoffs in a row, then it's not really gonna snowball for anything or into anything for Tornado Rocks. So I think the Midas is a okay. Okay, cool. We'll see how it works out here. I, it definitely could be okay if. Uh, Tornado Rocks sit back and just farm, but interestingly enough, he's going to buy Midas, then smoke up for a rotation. They go right in onto BZZ in the mid lane. Easy kill. It's a four on one. TP rotation gets canceled as well. Nemphi just playing mind games with him here. I'm going to get a farming tool and then roam and gank. Yeah, but that's the beauty of Wraith King, right? Like yeah. a lot of heroes, buying a Midas means that you would be really scared to go into team fights because the Midas doesn't offer you any survivability. But Wraith King has good strength gain, he's got Reincarnate. If you are on the front line, even with a Midas, the attack speed still benefits you in some way if you get lucky with a crit or two. Very and all true. you really have to do is throw out a stun, so... It's probably like one of the best Midas carriers in the game, also because just getting to level 16 faster is very, very nice for him. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. He is definitely one of those heroes that benefits from uh, the attack speed more than some others. Our Zeke gets clipped by a Chakram, but Trixie falls short on the Whirling Death and they'll let him get away. Does force a TP reaction though. It looks like it's the Lesh that's on his way in. Now maybe they're going to close in onto Trixie. There's the Silence, Lightning to follow up, and oh god, that's plenty of burst damage. They'll turn it around, Trixie not quite ready for that one. One for nil this time, going the way of Tornado Rocks. Yeah, he melted. The Shadow Demon was unfortunately a little bit too far away. I even think that OKC was planning on them jumping, and maybe he just wasn't ready for it at that particular point in time. So it should be a uh, tier 1 tower, I think, unless the bear dies. Bear is definitely going down. Three stacks of Shadow Poison as well as the Illuminate. We'll finish it off. TP in from Boogie. And is that enough to completely quell the push? There is also a Blink Dagger now up on the LC. Go stick halfway to level 11. So he can start to be a, a little more active in these team fights as well and look to pick up some dual damage. Yeah, this pickup is a um, high risk, high reward item for LC. You basically need to make sure the Shadow Demon's either not there, or you need to duel after the Disruption comes out. Those are your two options. He has to be very patient with how he plays this. Nemphi in the front lines here. Blink will disjoint the Wraith Fire Blast. Quick reaction there from Ghostic. Bear in the front. They're scouting things out a little bit here for Tornado Rocks. And it looks like Stark will just head for the hills and go back to farming. It's sort of like a game of chicken up here. Both teams are ready to retaliate if the other side commits for a fight, but nobody really wants to commit for it. Yeah, it's like, I think... To it's like not, neither team wants to fight, but they feel like the other team does, so they're like ready, but they don't want to. It's kind of odd. Tornado Rocks is still getting more out of the map, though. That's the important thing. Yeah. Whenever you see a passive game, whoever's farming more efficiently is pretty much winning, assuming they still have like a decent amount of map control. Typically, that kind of goes hand in hand. If you have bad map control, you can't farm. If you have good map control, you can. So, yeah. that being said, 
It's dark. Just trying to keep their buildings alive as long as they can. Double smoke up here. They got the A or I wanted to say AA, but it's R Zeke, and then he has level six now with the duel ready. Well, Tornado Rocks definitely want to keep pressuring here. They put a ward down on the plateau so they get some good vision around the tower. They smoke up. Ghost Stick, here we go. On his way in. Goes for Volix. They drop the Skywrath ult as well and just completely destroy the Keeper. That'll be the first victory of this game. Plus 10 damage and secures the level 11 for LC. Now they'll just move into the tower. Glyph comes out and some split push will be the name of the game here for Stark. But a nice clean kill. And finally, this tier 1 tower up top will go down. Yeah, that's the beauty of the Legion Skywrath right there. Yeah, that's no a nice shadow combo. Demon. He just dies instantly. Like, there's nothing you can do. Nemphi down bottom. TP reaction. Oh, hoo -hoo, entangling claws. That'll catch him. He'll try to TP home, but Yol's here. Fissure connects. Now Nemphi's going down. He has to reincarnate. Now, will there be any kind of support on the way? It looks like the answer is yes. He comes back to life. Trixie with a chalk number to try and clear it out. They've got some follow-up oh damage. God. Another entangling claw. This bear is a god right now. Secures the kill on the Wraith King. He does have a buyback. Not going to use it, but whoa, what a sonic wave from Boogie. Cripples Tornado Rocks. A duel will come out, but the defensive disruption is there. Ghost Stick will get denied that bonus damage. May even cost him his life. Chakram locks is down. It's a one for two. The old turnaround. And Tornado Rocks on the back foot, forced to retreat. Ooh, Boogie. Once Yol blinks forward, but can't get it. That Sonic Wave completely turned. That's a level two Sonic Wave as well. Beautiful positioning from Boogie. And that was like a Tokyo Drift. He like blinked, turned around, and then threw it out in the other direction. That was very nicely done. Completely. The uh, LC duel, again, you have to be very patient in this game. You can't just throw it out YOLO. You know, you see a core, you're like, oh, he blinked. I can totally duel this JK Shadow Demon. You can't let that happen. You have to really, really wait if you want to go for a, a duel like that, especially when you're outnumbered. So hopefully from that mistake, it doesn't happen too many more times. But mm -hmm. it's it's one of those heroes that if you aren't very good at judging your surroundings, you can just end up having like a completely useless game where you just duel the wrong target every time it gets saved or, you know, worst case scenario, you die instead. Right. You have to be very careful. Interesting build from the Queen of Pain. Boogie going right into a BKB first item. No, it's really good. He is actually it? needs it. Yeah. Okay. I guess like, Skywrath Flesh is... Uh, all of this magic damage is pretty scary. Yeah, and Shaker as well. Like, you blink into an Echo, you blink into a Fissure, any kind of stun, like you're just dead. Oh, mid lane, duel onto Nemphi. They know he doesn't have an ultimate. That is an easy kill and the second victory here for the LC. Now plus 24 onto Ghost Stick. Man, they the snowball their rolling. timing here. LC is one of those heroes that... Uh, she has probably one of the best late-game potentials like in a 1v1 scenario, just because of how Momona Courage works. They're going to find the uh, Timber as well. Down bottom, easy pick off again. Rinse and repeat, Tornado Rocks are just roaming around and man, really just playing to the strengths of their lineup. They've got a lot of burst damage in these big chunks and when they have the numbers advantage. And Stark, you're kind of just letting it happen. I mean, could be a third kill here mid. Volox is just hiding in the tree line. They're all nearby and Yol is hungry. All right, Coddle will retreat just in time, but... Yeah, the way that Stark have to play this now is, like, super defensive. It's very difficult to fight into such a high amount of damage you control at this stage in the game when there's no BKBs available. You only have one Shadow Demon save. So with that save, you need to have it count. You basically need to save it for a duel, use it on somebody who's silenced, who doesn't have BKB, who's otherwise going to die. Like those are pretty much the best ways that you can defensively disrupt. And there's pretty much no way, unless you're outnumbering, that you're ever going to be able to use that spell offensively. Because as soon as you do it, LC comes in, and you're just like, oh, well, that dual target's pretty much dead because they have Skywrath too. Yeah. It's a very hard situation for them. I feel, again, like their lanes just weren't that strong. Like top lane, they lost. They lost middle lane. Bottom lane, they also lost, actually, in terms of just flat CS. Obviously not as hard, but... Yeah, it was a bit more of a... It was not as lopsided as it was in game one, but still a yeah. very similar feel, where they went for this aggro try and didn't really win any of their lanes, which is what, what you're hoping for. We were at WCA, this game would have been disqualified. Thanks. <laughs> He's not wrong. Oh, God. Armlet up on the Wraith King. Oh, man. Their action stats. Boogie up top. They're about to tighten the noose. Here we go. Set up from the Yules right into the stun. That Queen of Pain. Nothing she could do besides be in a more defensive posture. Hard to see that one coming, though. Yeah, even uh, an entangle just for just for good measure, you know? Why not? Yeah. that entangling the hero bear up until this point tornado rocks haven't even lost a tower yet they, they look to be on another level honestly like watching the way that this games have been playing out 
Yeah. I think they're just the better team. Yeah, both games, the, the picks have been strong, and they've also just... It feels like they just outmaneuver them. That's the, the easiest way I could summarize it. We're going to see a setup here, perhaps. Ghost Stick focusing the tower instead, not going for the heroes quite yet. They're just slow sieging it. Glyph comes out, and it will get denied by the Wraith King. LC, ah, oh, there we go. Waiting for the Blade Mail before they take a fight. So the tower gets denied, but not a big deal. Still opening up the map a little bit here for Tornado Rocks. They can go Roche, actually, if they want. They're thinking about it, maybe? They have a lone druid bear, so it's it's quite easy to do. Yeah. And I don't actually think that Stark would want to fight them. I mean, the farm difference right now is starting to get a little bit out of hand. You know, the last couple of team fights didn't go Stark's way. Their landing phase wasn't so hot. They're not really effectively utilizing the map because they're walking around so much to try to get kills. I feel like the second game in a row, they've drafted themselves into a position where they literally can't do anything but fight, but they also can't win the fights because their lane's yeah. lost. It just seems really, really weird. I mean, this bear is getting really scary. He's got 4,200 gold now before Roche dies. He already has a Maelstrom up on the Spirit Bear, so he's already doing some decent damage. Now he can just move into a Radiance, upgrade the Mjolnir. The sky's the limit here for Sedoi. He's feeling pretty good, and he's just going to go right into the Relic. So there you go. Roche will fall. Aegis will get picked up by the Leshrac. Now on the other side of it, they find Nemphi. Fissure gets things started. He's got the Armlet as well as a Reincarnation. Bear in the front lines. Could be the first casualty of this fight. It is. Tornado Rocks seem a little hesitant to initiate into this. They're waiting for the LC to come around the backside. Blade Mail and Duel at the ready. Now another bear comes out, scouting out Nemphi. Oh, what a fissure. Connects on three. Ghost Stick goes in, gets the duel on Trixie. Follow-up damage, not quite there. Defensive Disruption will break it up. Now Trixie comes back out. Sonic Wave connects on three, and they'll turn on the LC. Nemphi, armlet toggling like a machine, will stay alive and keep his reincarnation cooldown for now. This LC is like way too YOLO. There's no reason to duel that. Like, they knew their whole team was there. They knew their whole team was there. Well, there was and that really low target right next to him that I think he wanted, but got out. I think, was it the Coddle or the Shadow? No, no, no. Demon? It was the Wraith King. He intentionally dueled the Timber. There's no way he duels the Wraith King in that spot because of reincarnation. Even mm. if he gets the kill, he comes back. You're snared. You don't have BKB. Wait, do you, you still get the still damage die. on the duel? You still get the damage yes, on the duel even if he has still reincarnation. Get the damage. Yes. So I. It seemed like he just wanted to hop in for the damage and then try to get out. That was the play I thought he was going to make. And then he stuttered and went for the timber and was committed. But No, no, no. He wanted the timber. Okay. All right. I, I promise you he wanted the timber. Because the thing is, if he kills the timber, I actually might have to hold that thought. Yeah. Trixie goes in onto Yol, but they turn it around. Yol drops the Echo. I'm not sure they have enough damage, though. Or Zeke doing as much as he can. He does have the ulti, but oh, he ends up going down. Trixie just cuts yeah. him in half. Clips the wings of the bird, and Yol moves into the fog and just tries to TP home, and it looks like he will make it. Nice. But, yeah, the uh, the biggest thing this game actually has been the LC that is kind of messing up really hard. If he didn't have those two YOLO duels that basically resulted in nothing, I think they would be in a much better position. Because what happens if he doesn't duel that timber? Okay, they don't get kills. Maybe they go bottom, start pressuring the tower, start splitting up the map, farming more, getting farther ahead. He goes for a low probability duel, ends up dying, forces his team back, that results in another skirmish where another one of his teammates die. Like these are the kind of plays that let Stark get back into the game. So he he really really needs to stop getting so impatient. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just like I'm kind of being harsh on him because I love that hero and when people play Ooh. like that, it's the not noise. great. Down bottom, entangling claws on Nemphi. First hit. He'll finish off the reincarnation. He's still alive. They're gonna turn it on to Trixie before Sedoi goes down. He commits suicide, so it was intentional. They still lose the lone druid, but. My god, I, I feel like that gank alone speaks to the power of the Lone Druid. That was a one on four, and he still would have killed that hero if it was pretty much anyone else. But again, like you were saying, these little pickoffs start getting the clear advantage there. Suicide yeah. and reincarnation for the bear. Nice net worth bump. One of those games, man. It's one of those games where you have like a really solid lead, and then you get overconfident, you make a couple of mistakes, and the enemy team still has the team composition that they need to be able to win with. Whereas Stark, they just had a really rough laning phase two games in a row. When they team fight, their team fight coordination is fine. It's just the, the lanes. But Valak's going to be spotted here. Yeah, duel down bomb should be an easy one on the Coddle. Yes, it is. Okay. 38 duel damage now for Ghost Stick. Yeah, this is the period where I think you just go for the easy duels. Just try and rack up a little bit of damage and then Oops. makes your team fighting that much easier. He has a BKB on the way, it looks like. Ogre Club already in tow. Sorry about that. I just threw something across my desk on accident. Calm Not down, Draskal. My god, you're so angry, man. Man, I got, I got this, like, not a stress ball, but 
it's like a, a mini foam roller basically mm -hmm. and i was just like messing with it and i just threw it across the room on accident <laughs> i don't even know how i did that impressive it's like it's like freudian rage just coming out you can't help but just <clears throat> let it out yeah, well it happens bzz he's got the octarine core he's all cored up and oh yeah there it is the blink dagger for the earth shaker a lot of big items coming out on uh, tornado he's rocks right now yeah, next it's a, little it's window is going to be tough he's kind of showing it though like Oh wait, is this on the courier? My it's on the courier. courier. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He didn't show. That's good. Uh, yeah, that should be enough for them to win at least one decent team fight. But again, like these pickoffs, giving a lot of breathing room to Stark. BKB with the halfway to Aghanim is now done on Boogie. There's a lot of item progression coming out on Stark that Tornado Rocks really just didn't have an answer for, solely because they just got too aggressive. They're still looking for kills now. They want to try to reestablish the map control or at the very least get some more tier twos. They killed the bottom tower as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they traded tier 1 for tier 2. Double damage rune still up on BZZ for a few more seconds here, so they'll just go right into the tier 2 mid. No glyph reset, and uh, the spirit bear will tank it up. Now has the Radiance completed, and the Druid has another 1,800 gold. At this point, it's just Tornado Rocks. Clearing out the towers, again, opening up the map a little more. You take a look at the wards they have down, and really good vision of the enemy jungle, so they can continue to find pickoffs and get a little extra damage on that LC whenever they see the Coddle by his lonesome. Mid lane, oh, Boogie with a haste rune gets a freebie on the Skywrath Mage. Agony. And they want more, I think. No, I don't know anything. if they'll find it, though. Yeah. yeah, no one's no one's in the area. I thought maybe Tornado Rocks might stick around so a little bit, but how, they're just going to go back. How big is this Coddle Ags? He picked it up maybe, was it five minutes ago? Perhaps a little earlier? It's really good. Uh, okay, so against heroes like Legion, who pretty much make you stand still and heavy stun lock, it can be really good, especially if the Legion doesn't have BKB, because the offset of health that you're getting is pretty much a thousand, right? Because you're healing for 500, you're hitting for 500. Well, of course, after magic resistance, it's not quite that. But, uh, yeah, Slacks, we know. Five five minutes ago, dude, he's trying his best, man. Come on. <laughs> Don't be such a cheeky little git. Gold but, uh, star for Zyori, woo! Are Plus one. Just Plus wait one. till you get your first gold star. Dude, I'll Drascal. give you even like a smiley face sticker. How about that? <laughs> oh, recall, Nemphy. Oh, good. That was a close one. Let's be real. All right. Well, this Midas is definitely starting to pay off for the Wraith King, though. He's number one on net worth for his team, just barely pulling ahead of the Quap. And, you know, in retrospect, I, I honestly think it's worked out. I might have been wrong about this one. He's almost level 16. The experience has really paid off. And now he's... He's back on track. I mean, he'll be in fighting form in another five or ten minutes and actually start to be a threat in these team fights. Uh, it's never really a problem buying Midas on this hero. It just nine times out of ten is going to pay off. It's very uh, seldom that it... You really, nine times out of ten? I feel like I've seen more games than that where he goes Midas first. It's like, what was the plan? And they just run over him before he hits level 11. Yeah, but in those games, what other item besides Midas would have let him win? As we see a dunk here on the boogie. Uh... Draskal, yeah. always, always with the the one up, man. You're just as people say in chat. I should know better than to question Dad. Well, I mean, it's not that you shouldn't question me. It's just that you should have reasons behind everything that you do. So even nice. if your reasoning is wrong, if you have a reason, you're already a step ahead of most people. Okay, all right. Like communism is better than anarchy because at least it's an ethos kind of a thing. I got you. I see where you're going, Draskal. I like it. Uh oh. Nemphy in the front lines. He's got to reincarnate. He's taking heavy damage. Boogie with the BKB on. They want BZZ. He's got the Octarine, though. He's pretty beefy. He'll go down. And the rest of Tornado Rocks will kind of just watch it happen. The Bears left behind. Now they turn back in on a Trixie. Ghostic with the duel. Blinding Light oh, breaks it up. And he'll still get the victory. Now the rest of the fight breaks out. They'll lose the LC. Nemphy, he's come back to life. He's still got reincarnation. Can they bring him down? No. He'll finish off our Zeke. It's a one for three. Sadoi trying to clean this up, but a defensive disruption buys some more time. Now he turns on to Boogie. They'll finish off the Shadow Demon as well as the Wraith King. All of a sudden, there's two left aside on both sides, but Boogie just has the damage. Volux doing some work here. Not sustaining because it is nighttime, but still these blinding lights have made such a difference in this fight. And now the Mana Leak will stop Yol from making a retreat. He pops all of his mana to try to run, but still gets stunned up. This should be a five-man wipe. And Stark, they do it here, Draskal. They make it happen three for five. My god. I, I thought at the beginning of that fight, that Fissure coming in from the Shaker was so good. It stopped the Shadow Demon from getting in range to throw out the Disruption onto the Timber that resulted in him dying. As soon as that happened though, the fight just went to crap. I think there was a, actually a Bloodstone heal as well that came out from him. Yeah, he did have Bloodstone for that yeah. one. And the rest of the team was just in way too good a shape. The Coddle living the entire time means that he's able to throw out like two or three Chakrams onto the Queen of Pain, who normally mm -hmm. 
in that long of a fight would have run out of mana. But because she she was able to get the chakra spam, she just keeps going, dealing more damage over the course of the fight, like you mentioned, the blinds as well. That was probably the most work I've seen a Coddle do in a team fight in a really long time. Yeah, very impressive. About a 3,500 net worth swing in favor of Stark, something like that. Not too bad, considering they lost uh, the bulk of their team as well. Lesh now uh, close to his BKB, and, and he kind of needs it. I feel like Tornado Rocks also took that fight really weird. But they were all in position and kind of sacrificed the Lesh before they all jumped in. And it seemed like they could have committed earlier and save him, but they were thinking about just doing a full retreat before they reinitiated. That was a bit strange, to say the least. I think they're getting a bit antsy. Like, they, they lost a couple of fights. They feel like their map control has diminished a bit, and they want to try to get it back because they figured that they were still in the lead. And I, I don't know. It It's one of those games where, okay, two fresh BKBs. This should put Tornado Rocks back into a really good spot because there's still a tremendous amount of magic damage coming out, like Timber, Queen, Coddle. Like, these heroes are predominantly magic damage. Well, Timber's all magic and fear damage, but you can negate all of it with BKBs. So this should be... A really good power spike for them. They can also kill Roshan, which is doing right now. This makes their next push even more terrifying. At the very least, this should allow them to re-establish the map control that they've lost in the last like 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, and it's unfortunate maybe... for Stark because they, they've kind of read this, they smoke up, but they're just too slow. They don't get there in time and Lesh will get another Aegis. So now uh, Tornado Rocks can basically do what they did before, but Lesh will come back to life and they should be able to take a much better fight this go around. Yeah, they, they've still got the control here. There's also Dark a might Veil just, uh, out on our Zeke, which is pretty scary. Dark might just use their Queen and Wraith King to split push lanes and the Keeper of the Light. They can play the mobility game now, since it's getting to that stage where having the Keeper of the Light vision during daytime, being able to pull people around with recall and whatnot can just be super annoying. But Tornado Rocks, not looking to try to give them the chance, just going to barrel down mid with all five heroes. They got the bear. Okay, yep. here we go. It is daytime though, and it just turned daytime as well. Coddle doing a lot of work, but now Boogie, BKB'd up, gets dueled by Ghost Nick. Does he have the damage? He does! That's additional damage going his way. Beautiful Echo from Yol as well, secures the kill onto the Timber Saw. Now we'll see Yol get isolated by Nemphi. Gets brought down, but it's going to cost Nemphi everything, his entire life. Now OKC okay, uh, isolated off to the side. It's a one for four overall, and not many buybacks for Stark. Wraith King, the only one with it available. All the while, the bear is just like, yeah, forget about these heroes. I'm going for objectives, baby. That takes down the tier three tower. Melee barracks have already imploded, and they're going to go straight bottom and hit this tier three. This is crippling damage here coming out from Tornado Rocks, and they still even have the Aegis of the Immortal on the Leshrac. Uh, there it GG. is, GG. Okay. A valiant effort from Stark, actually. It looked for a few minutes there like they were going to be able to turn it around. In these types of situations, though, the team that has the lead, all it takes is like one really good decisive fight, and then the game becomes very difficult. Fortunately for Tornado Rocks, they had a hero like Lone Druid that is one of the best in the business when it comes to just destroying the enemy base. Maybe if their push had been a little bit slower, there might have been like one or two team fights left in the Stark, but they decided to tap out. I think that's a fair call, just yeah. realizing that it got a little bit too out of hand. Uh, this game, though, I didn't really feel like it showcased the power of LC that much, even though in the last team fight there was a really good duel by Gostic. He caught the BK bead, uh, BK bead Queen of Pain. And obviously yep. when you pop BK bead, you can't get disrupted. So that's also one thing you always have to be very mindful of when you're playing against Legion Commander and you have somebody on your team with a save, is if they can't target you through magic immunity, you're, you're going to die, more or less. Yeah, that's a, a really good point. You don't think about that mechanic very often, but... Your defensive tool does not work for you once you get the ultimate defensive tool in the BKB. So it'll go 2-0 in favor of Tornado Rocks. That means Stark is officially the first team eliminated from the qualifier stage here of Captain's Draft 3.0. Coming up next, we'll have the second uh, lower bracket round one matchup. That is Power Rangers versus Stake Gaming. So we'll get to cast our buddy Cinderin coming up next here. And I think we're going to have a little break, Draskal. Is that scheduled to start in 15 minutes or an hour and 15 minutes? I think it's in an hour and 15 minutes. So uh, we're going to have a, a little break ski here, and then we're going to come back with our second series of the day. But uh, we'll we'll follow up in Twitch chat on that for all y'all waiting around. But thank you for joining us, of course. I'm Zyori, joined by Draskal. Sir Action Stats with at the helm on that front, and Pit Muckle doing the OBS in production. We'll be back. Thank you for watching Captain's Draft 3.0, and buy the new chest that's in the store, the Enigmatic Wanderer. 10% of all sales go to the prize pool. We're going to show off those sets a little bit later on. Guys, stick around, because we got more Dota 2 action coming your way after this break.